Hello, you're here. I'm so glad you're joining in with us today as St. Paul's United Church in Oakville, Ontario, where autumn has swiftly and assuredly arrived. As we look out around us, we acknowledge that these lands have been home for thousands of years to Indigenous people. The Anishinaabe and the Atawandarog, the Haudenosaunee and the Métis, and we honor that the place of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation is as dedicated stewards of this land. I'm Carolyn Smith, and with Deborah Lafferette, we serve here seeking God's love and justice and hope with all of you on this land. And we're wearing our orange today in honor of the new and long awaited National Day for Truth and Reconciliation. It's marked as a national holiday on September 30th. And we're gonna see a video today as well to tell the story of Orange Shirt Day about a young Phyllis Webstad. Sometimes privilege looks like being able to ignore a crisis that others are suffering from. So this week, as St. Paul's, we don't ignore this crisis, we face it together, taking the time and bearing the discomfort as we learn together and grow. Another justice crisis that we face together is our climate extinction crisis. And this is the basis of our theme of God's creation, closely tied with indigenous relations, racial issues and poverty issues, foreign relations and immigration as well. All of this is right relations. How we look to one another, govern this country together, how we offer up some privilege and comfort so others have more. This is closely tied for us in our prayer on earth as in heaven. For this is God's beloved creation beginning here with us. So if you've got your candle ready, now is a good time. Or you can join me in lighting this one, this rainbow candle of God's creation that shows us love in one another, light that shines a path forward to right relations, that crosses time and space to you and your loved ones and your new friends joining in. So we light this candle allowing the peace of Christ and the light of the world to bring us hope. Let us pray. Creator God, we gather now to share in your dream of abundant life for all. We gather to give and receive gifts of deep emotion, deep wisdom, and deep love. Learning here among friends and striving to meet our neighbors with love. Open us, Creator, to the power of interconnectedness, to the sharing of gifts and opportunities so all may truly be one, nation to nation, living being to living being, earth, water, creatures, and sky. And we celebrate the power of your spirit always moving, always here, calling us to worship. Amen. Sing, sing, 
Today I am reading selected verses from the 14th chapter of the story of Esther. Esther 4, 1 through 14, selected verses. When Mordecai learned all that had been done, Mordecai tore his clothes and put on sackcloth and ashes and went through the city wailing with a loud and bitter cry. He went up to the entrance of the king's gate for no one might enter the king's gate clothed with sackcloth. When Esther's maids and her eunuchs came and told her, the queen was deeply distressed. She sent garments of clothes to clothe Mordecai so that he could make, take off his sackcloth, but he would not accept them. Then Esther called for Hacketh, one of the king's eunuchs, who had been appointed to attend her, and ordered him to go to Mordecai to learn what was happening and why. Hacketh went out to Mordecai in the open square of the city in front of the king's gate and Mordecai told him all that had happened to him. Mordecai also gave him a copy of the written decree issued in Susa for their destruction, that he might show it to Esther, explain it to her, and charge her to go to the king to make supplication to him and entreat him for her people. Hacketh went and told Esther what Mordecai had said. Then Esther spoke to Hacketh and gave him a message for Mordecai, saying, All the king's servants and the people of the king's provinces know that if any man or woman goes to the king inside the inner court without being called, there is but one law, all alike are to be put to death. Only if the king holds out the golden scepter to someone, may that person live. I myself have not been called to come in to the king for thirty days. When they told Mordecai what Esther had said, Mordecai told them to reply to Esther, Do not think that in the king's palace you will escape any more than all the other Jews. For if you keep silent at this such a time as this, relief and deliverance will rise for the Jews from another quarter, but you and your father's family will perish. Who knows? Perhaps you have come to royal dignity for just such a time as this. May God grant us understanding of this holy text. Let us pray. May the words from my lips and the meditations of my heart be guided by your spirit and be words of wisdom for this day. Amen. Martin Niemöller was a German theologian and Lutheran pastor. He was also a supporter of Adolf Hitler and was a self-identified anti-Semite, which means he had a prejudice against Jewish people. In 1938, he was imprisoned for speaking out against Nazi control over churches. From 1938 to 1945, he was in concentration camps and narrowly escaped execution. After his imprisonment, he expressed his deep regret about not having done enough to help victims of the Nazis. And in 1946, he wrote the following poem, which many of you may know. First They Came by Martin Niemöller. First they came for the communists, and I did not speak out because I was not a communist. Then they came for the socialists, and I did not speak out because I was not a socialist. Then they came for the trade unionists, and I did not speak out because I was not a trade unionist. Then they came for the Jews, and I did not speak out because I was not a Jew. Then they came for me, and there was no one left to speak out for me. When I think about Nazi Germany, I think of evil. I think of bad people who did bad things. That's partly because I've been inundated with messages from childhood, from our media, in television, books, movies, portraying Nazi Germany as the enemy, the baddest of the bad. But also because it's just easier to paint everyone with the same brush simpler to explain the death of six million Jewish people by saying 
Hitler was evil and that Nazis were bad people. Because the Nazis were eventually defeated, the winners have been able to write the story of heroism and triumph over this enemy that wanted to take over the world. But it's more complex than this, as most things are. Hitler and his Nazis were saving the people in Germany. After the First World War, their nation and their economy were in shambles. People were hungry. People were destitute. Germany was a country that needed help, and it was ready for a charismatic leader to be their savior. When people are scared, they will sometimes put their hopes on policies that promise security and safety, on a leader who is confident and strong and has all the answers. When people are scared, some will take advantage, use that fear, use their insecurities as an opportunity to gain power, gain trust and loyalty, and then use that to their own advantage. This is scary stuff. And it does not only happen in Germany. It happens today. If you don't know the story of Esther, I would encourage you to delve into that story. It is a book in our Bible. Allison read a passage for us today from the book of Esther. It is the only one that does not mention God at all. It's a great story of a king with ultimate power, with powerful, manipulative advisors, and one person who saved her people by taking a risk in standing up to that power. The story begins with a king who wanted to show off his beautiful wife to all his friends. And when she refused, he banished her. Then he sent a declaration throughout all the lands that read, every man should be master in his own house. Then all the young maidens were brought before the king to find a replacement for the banished queen. It does not say they went willingly. Esther, a young woman with no parents who lived with her cousin Mordecai, was taken to the palace. We are told she was fair and beautiful, and the king chose her and advanced her to the best place in the harem. We are also told that Esther did not reveal her people or kindred. We are to assume that she would have been at risk if found out she was Jewish. Then we hear about Haman who was the king's most trusted advisor and was very powerful. Haman became angry when Mordecai, Esther's cousin, did not bow down to him. When Haman discovered Mordecai was Jewish, Haman vowed to destroy all Jewish people. He did not know that his king's favorite was also Jewish. After reading Esther's story, we might hear Niemöller's poem in a different way. First they came for Queen, ba Queen Vashti, and I did not speak out, because I wasn't royalty. Then they came for the young maidens, and I did not speak out, because I was not a young maiden. Then they came for the Jews, and I spoke out, because I was a Jew and because I needed to protect my family. Mordecai and the Jewish people were fortunate at that time. Esther, though fearful, spoke out. She went before the king without permission and held Haman accountable for, for trying to destroy her people. She needed some encouragement, and this is where we hear Mordecai's words. Do not think that in the king's palace you will escape any more than all the other Jews. For if you keep silence at such a time as this, relief and deliverance will rise for the Jews from another quarter, 
but you and your father's family will perish. Who knows? Perhaps you have come to royal dignity for just such a time as this. For such a time as this. What might these words mean for us today? If we keep silence at such a time as this, what are we allowing to happen? This is not about waiting until the last minute to speak up and stand up against injustice. It's about speaking up and standing up now, before others are harmed and before we have to fight for our own lives and those we love. How long before Indigenous people are offered true repentance and given autonomy as nations? How long before Black people are treated fairly by the police and our justice system? How long before immigrants are given the same rights as citizens? How long before seniors in care and those with disabilities are treated with respect and dignity? How long before all life on this earth is treated with respect and care? Friends, we speak out now because every person who hurts, every person who is trampled upon, every person who is not treated with respect and dignity is an extension of ourselves, which means we are also being hurt, trampled upon, and are not being treated with respect and dignity. We are all connected. We all come from the stars. Literally, we all are stardust. Our essence, the smallest particles of all life, are the same. Paul's words about being one in Christ and being one body, where one part is hurting, the whole is in pain, actually has some scientific basis. Our world cannot be safe cannot be at peace, cannot be whole, until all life is safe, at peace, and whole. I am concerned that there is so much conflict and division. For such a time as this, when our earth is burning, when people are at war with one another, when pandemics are killing our most vulnerable, we need to come together. We need to hold on to one another. We need each other, period. As a spiritual people, as a people of God, we know this. Religion has been used in many harmful ways, but at its best, we know we are one with this world, one with all life, which means we cannot help from offering ourselves to heal this world, love this world, and help bring God's kingdom on earth. I'd like to offer another adaptation of Niemöller's poem. First, they came to the immigrants and I spoke out because we are all immigrants. Then they came for the imprisoned and paroled, and I spoke out because we are all imprisoned and paroled. Then they came for protesters and activists, and I spoke out because we are all protesters and activists. Then they came for those living on the streets, and I spoke out because we are all living on the streets. Then they came for those who wear religious symbols, and I spoke out because we all wear religious symbols. Then they came for the young, the old, the disabled, and I spoke out because we are all young, old, and disabled. Then they came for me, and because I spoke out, we all stood together, shoulder to shoulder, as one, supporting each other, holding one another, offering healing, 
and wisdom and love. One body, one creation, one in the cosmic Christ, one in spirit. Thanks be to God. Amen. I'm Jay Smith, and uh, we are the, uh, I don't know what we are. We are the producers today. You know what? Thank you. I really appreciate that. We are the producers. Details to come. We are the producing halves of Deborah and Carolyn. And uh, thank you for joining us uh, this morning. So, as you know, we are uh, doing the announcements a little bit uh, later in the service. Uh, try not to take it personally. No. Nope. Yeah. We weren't even consulted. You know that, right? Yeah. There is some personal there. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyways, but I'm glad where we are, you still get to see us. Wasn't that sermon awesome? It was. It was. So... I just want to note that, first of all, wearing orange uh, for Orange Shirt Day today. Because orange is the new black. It, it is. And so we're wearing Orange Shirt Day today, uh, Orange to Celebrate Orange Shirt Day, and recognizing that on Thursday is the Truth and Reconciliation Day, day to recognize Truth and uh, Reconciliation. And it's national. Uh, and it's national. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, and there are events going on throughout the week please consult, consult the newsletter and uh yeah yeah uh we're also going to have a guest speak two guest speakers next week from oakville ready uh they're going to be talking about a new book that they're hoping everybody in the community reads and the race for rice Ooh. and also it is the liturgical season of creation you know what i love this season i really do so we're going to race for rice we're going to race for rice from oakville ready yep I think they, they planned this. That I was think good. So. so lastly, we're pretty excited yep. um, because for Thanksgiving this year, St. Paul's is going to be collecting produce. Right. So we're thinking fresh vegetables, produce, things that you would grow in the garden, things that you can get. Dragon fr fruit. Dragon fruit. Uh, and, and things that you can harvest. I always wonder if you pull any fruit from behind you, you're dragon fruit. That's true. Yeah. So, uh, and you know, you can turn a pumpkin into a squash just by dropping it. Yep. It's true. But that being said, we're looking for people to drop off uh, produce an hour before the service on... Thanksgiving. On Thanksgiving. Sunday. Yeah. Uh, on, on the Sunday. Uh, I really need Jay, folks. Um, and uh, so at 9 to 10 before the service and then from 12 to 1 after the service. So please feel free to drop off some produce and uh, we will get it to uh, where we need to get it to. Come out and see the producers. Ooh, <laughs> very good. <laughs> really and and like we'll it. keep Ron and his jokes at home. Oh, well, yeah, because that wouldn't be uh, productive. No. Not at all. And with that, St. Paul's, we are in the very last and probably one of the more important, important announcements. We're still waiting to see how you want us to send you off. We're looking for suggestions. We have vetoed a chorus line, a kick line. That is not... No, line dancing is out. Line dancing is out. But we are still looking for more suggestions on how we can sign off. And not from and, Catherine. And none from Catherine. Aaron suggested cartwheels. Yeah, cartwheels? you know what? I kind of have raptor arms. They, I don't think they could hold yeah, me Yeah, cartwheels. Up. Sorry, Taryn. Yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. Not, yeah, you no. know what? That would that would be bad. I mean, she, she's allowed to do more, but no, none from Catherine. No. Okay. All right, St. Paul's. Be safe, be kind, and uh, until next week. Good morning. All right. Um, so yeah, that was uh, Phyllis Webstad, and uh, Thursday is the National Day for Truth and Reconciliation, and it's also Orange Shirt Day. So there are businesses that, businesses that will be closed. Many of us still have to work, but there are many ways that you can honor this day. And we have offered some suggestions in the newsletter. So take a look, um, and if you don't get the newsletter, just ask and we can forward it on to you. Um, our church is getting busy again. It's great. Uh, we even had some conflict issues over the weekend as to who gets what, who, who gets what room downstairs. But we had a drumming workshop yesterday, and uh, that was something Tracy planned for our K-6 to Sunday school children and their families. And we'd like to show you a video, a drumming video, of a song that they played called, um, I'm trying to remember what it was, Cotton Candy Thunderstorm, I think it was called. So let's listen to what they did yesterday.
pretty awesome. Thanks to the Sunday School for sharing that with us. Um, just a few other notes. Um, I wanted to let you know, uh, many of you may not even know, but we have this whole group of people who come on weekends and take care of the grounds at St. Paul's. We have um, a whole group of people who mow the lawn, and we've been having problems with our lawnmower. Um, we had a donation to the church from a family who donated a wonderful new lawnmower for the lawn cutting, and they have made that donation in memory of Lloyd Wilson, um, who, who was one of our many losses during the pandemic. So thank you to that family who made that donation as we remember today again, Lloyd Wilson, who was a longtime member of St. Paul's. Uh, as um, Jeff and Jay mentioned, we do have guest speakers next week. They will be talking, a book call, talking about a book called Saving Us that they're encouraging the whole community to read. You will notice that I went to the bookstore yesterday and bought a copy. Uh, this one is for the church. But if you are looking for a copy, can't afford maybe to go and buy a copy at the store, this one is available. Just give me a call or contact me somehow but they are also available at all the libraries. So just, uh, you can also borrow them from the library. And the last thing I wanna mention is, uh, a few years ago, we um, worked at bringing a family to Oakville from, well, they were in Malaysia. They're refugees from Myanmar. Uh, when they came, it was the Biak and Bandot and their daughter. They have had two daughters since then, and I heard sometime this week, I got a text from Biak saying that they have had their fourth child, another daughter, and they have chosen to name her Deborah, which I am very, very honored about. So congratulations to Biak and Van Dot on their growing family. All right, let us now enter into a time of prayer. Faye Copeland is going to offer the prayers of the people. Good morning, St. Paul's. Here are the prayers of the people this Sunday, September the 26th, 2021. Loving God, we come to worship you today with grateful and hopeful hearts. We look forward to the approaching season and the wonders your natural world bestows on us every autumn as it prepares for its time of rest. Creator, we thank you for the waning summer days that we are still able to enjoy in this part of your world. We do not take for granted the measure of freedom we are afforded now in the wake of a global pandemic. We rejoice in the fact that we are able to assemble with family and friends, albeit in a cautious way. Dear one, you know how much we need that interaction with others how necessary it is to our well-being. It is a blessing that we missed for so long. We celebrate the plans for opening our church building, for the new school year, for norm normality, and for the promises these events bring for us starting over, a new beginning, another chance to get it right. Let us embrace sharing instead of greed. Let us celebrate the victories of others instead of envying them. Help us to recognize the needs of others before our own needs. Instead of selfishly counting our money, achievements, and victories, let us count our many blessings. They may seem homespun, ordinary, nothing special, but they are the very essence of life, contentment, and happiness. Savior of us all, we know that the world in which we live is not perfect. Imperfection is our own grievous doing. Help us to realize that we have this one planet on which to live. We have nowhere else to go. Lead us, every one, to an understanding of this profound fact and guide us not just into tolerance for one another, for tolerance is just not enough but to an embracing and loving of each other, imperfect as we all are. Lord, help our leaders to negotiate plans for an end to worldwide conflict and guide us individually 
to resolve misunderstandings and disagreements among family members, friends, and acquaintances. Only then will your people live in the kind of world that you planned. May it be so, parent of us all. We ask for your perfect guidance as we strive to leave COVID-19 behind by cooperating and following safe routines and trusting the knowledge, research, and advice of medical experts. experts. Bless our newly elected Canadian leaders in all the work they do on our behalf. May they be wise, upright, and transparent in every decision as they work to make our Canada forever a place of honesty, justice, trust, and freedom for all who call it home. Comfort all within our church family who are grieving the loss of dear ones or who are troubled in any way. Assist them in finding a way to your peace and your love, Holy One. Join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And that is one of my favorites. I love the bounce to it. Um, so I'll see some of you on Zoom. Uh, I've got my computer set up and I'm ready to greet you as you come, come on. It's, um, the link is on the website, stpaulsoakville.com. It's also in the newsletter. For such a time as this, may God be our light, may Christ guide our way, and may the Spirit help us to know when it's time to speak out. Amen. <laughs>